evening, everybody, and welcome to Tech Talk Tonight. I'm your host, Raiden Henze. This is episode number 53. Uh, we went over the hump last week, we, or yeah, last week with our 52nd episode, one year worth of content. So we're on to year two of this type of podcast for everybody. And I'm joined in studio tonight by that one guy that everybody can't get enough of, Mr. Gavin Ray Camper. How yes, are you, I, sir? I am the better looking of the duo here. Um, so we had a discussion in a bar last night that we are essentially the same person, except I could run farther and you're better looking. How does the chat room feel about this? I could run farther, too. Are you sure? Considering you have a bum leg. I, Someone was, ran too far. <laughs> it was a bum two feet. It was just the bottoms, and they're oh, doing yeah. okay. We talked I'm about not, that last week, though. I'm not on ice this week. We're, we're, we're running again. The zombies are chasing me. Zombie, or uh, <laughs> what was it? I don't want to say it, but there's a tumble log out there for Zombies Run as well that uh, gives playlists and tips on the game and stuff, so go check that out. Anyway, we're here to talk tech tonight. Um, it's a little hot down here in the basement, but things are running, and Gavin's going to give us our first story. What's going on over there, Gavin? Well, this, you, this I wish you had some, um, I wish you had taps ready because this week, I could sing it, many web services have passed away. That's not taps, but okay. Well, that's like the end of Bankers Away or whatever. That that's the yeah, sad that, music. I mean, yeah, that's the sad music. What's that even called? Anyway, both Adrian, no. Oink, we'll find out. Oink from Milk Incorporated, a popular rate anything app. I used it a lot. Did you use it? I used it some. It's uh, what would you compare it to for somebody that doesn't use Oink? Mm. Kind of like. Um, Yelp, but for things instead of restaurants. Yeah, but it, you were like rating things at the restaurants and stuff. Like food, mostly, is what I saw. Yeah, so Oink died. If you go to oink.com, you see a sad thing. You can get your data out. I did that earlier today. You essentially get some comma-separated values, uh, files, and the photos that you uploaded, which is nice that they're allowing you to download your stuff. But... um. Another service passed away at South by Southwest, Gowalla. Okay, now tell us what Gowalla was since, you know, people don't know what that's I mean, either. Gowalla is the thing that if you look back in our archives, probably to our first episode, you were talking about your iPhone. It's true. Uh, Android back then. I was still on the Droid back when okay, we first yeah, started Yeah, you were this. on your Android, and I was on my BlackBerry, and you were telling me how amazing Goala was. It's true. And you get to check in places, and you can make money or something, or you could follow their little their little tours and get points. And that's the one thing I'm going to miss most about Goala, was they had more or less a tour for m most popular universities around the around the United States more than around the globe. But the tours were like a way of, they had the places already created on the app itself. So like Foursquare does your check-ins at different places. Well, those were already created from there. But then they had created the tours, which more or less took you, like the one tour that I was popular, excited to have done was the Las Vegas tour because it took you everywhere around Las Vegas. And I was, like, one of the first 15 people to have completed it because it was kind of crazy. And you were the last person to complete it because no one ever went on their site after <laughs> that. Um, it brings up an interesting point that people around the Internet were talking about today is, is the concept of using a service for free. And if you're using a service for free online, it's, they, they equated it to if you're, like, if you, have, if you set up an office in a building for free. And the okay. landlord's just like, yeah, go ahead and set up your office here. But then, you know, like, you know, like, if you're actually setting your, setting up an office for a business in a building that you're not renting from, you would never, no one would ever do that, right? Because the landlord could kick you out at any time. Did I lose my, you got me? I got gotcha. you. So you would never do that. You would always insist on, if you're starting a business, you would want to rent out a space. Okay. Pay money as it were. And what? they're making the argument that you should never use an online service unless you're paying money because otherwise that service can just e even, you could do what Posteris did this week as well, which Posteris sold out to Twitter and now they are closing up shop. Well, they're integrating with Twitter, but it's not going to be the same product. So someone who built their, you know, their business or their process or even their personal blog on Posteris, suddenly they have to change what they were doing, and it's, uh, it's 
an interesting problem. Okay, so it's kind of like getting what you pay for, more or less, right? You're going to get your more features. You're going to get something that's more permanent if you're paying for the app. But yeah, that's what and we're uh, taking away from. Yeah, that. I mean, it's 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 certainly a capitalistic society, and it's a free society as well. You can do what you please, but I guess the people online are just suddenly realizing and advocating for services that allow you to pay. For example, there are a lot of services online where they don't even have a pay option. Right. Facebook, for example, maybe. But Facebook isn't going away. But there are other services that, you know, you just use. But who's to say that in a year or two that won't go away and die? Okay, but what about the fact that, like, the whole saying that if you're not paying for... Or, um, if the marketing plan isn't clear, then you are the market, like... Is yeah. it basically that those apps aren't utilizing... If they're not selling something, they're selling you. Right. So those apps more or less weren't selling you, therefore they're not making money, and that's why they're going under? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that say that ad-supported revenue and services are... Like, you can make it work for huge things like Facebook, but in general it's not a good idea that they'd much rather have no advertisers in online services and have it all pay and it would be better overall like if you talk about macroeconomics the money you would pay is less than the annoyance that you put it to get from the ads because there's a good uh there's a good example story um case study of brazil a city in brazil they actually outlawed billboards okay and people it's amazing people can still market they just have to think of uh, different ways, better ways than just plastering a billboard, and it makes the city look much better. Okay. Do they still have graffiti artists in these people places I mean, that I don't, don't have, the, have billboards? I don't have the case study pulled up. Maybe our chat room can find it, but uh, <laughs> I don't know where the graffiti artists go. All right. So, do you know any of the special ways that they were going about not using billboards to? I mean, what probably, I would guess handouts, I would guess digital marketing, okay. television spots. I mean, the point is that you don't, if you level the playing field, then the playing field will be leveled. That's That can be your interesting okay. thought of the night. <laughs> so to bring it back around as we lose our video while I fix things with this stupid chat room... Um, you need some time there? You want us just to stop? No, no, we're good. Um, we'll just go with the title number, whatever. To kind of bring it back around, um, we're losing a couple apps. We're losing Oink, we're losing Gowalla. Why did they pick this time? Like, why why announce that you're going under during South by Southwest? Like, South by Southwest seems to be, like, the place that things are being launched and such. Why this year are we suddenly getting... Well, Oink just died today, so... Oh, was that... South by South, Southwest is still going on. Well, today. South by Southwest Interactive is over, though, isn't it? Uh, well, I don't know what the actual dates for the Interactive Expo is going on, but um, essentially it started last Friday and it goes up to this next weekend, I know. But that could just be the bar crawls and all the parties that are going on. It's more or less drunk by Southwest now, it seems. Everybody's South by just Southwest Interactive. Oh, wait, never mind. Um, anyway, I don't know. I don't think there's a rhyme or reason. It just kind of happens. Gotcha. Some things in life are random, Braden. I don't believe that. I think everything has a reason. Oh, and so every season turns. We don't have to. We need to get off this topic. But yes. it also um, there's there was a, a story today on Lifehacker about how to get three gigabytes of more space on Dropbox. Yeah, brings up the point that most of the people on Dropbox don't pay. I don't pay. Um, and they've got a pretty good. Uh, profit model where the the like 10 percent of people who do pay like pay enough money where the rest of us can get it for free but it is a similar situation where lots of people aren't paying and what happens if suddenly dropbox gets sold to i don't know microsoft or something and because their cloud service isn't doing all too well <laughs> i mean crazier things have happened uh so what's their um cloud-based uh, storage microsoft as, as you were Azure, Azure, yeah. Azure, Azure. You have to make that. Zhizha. Yes. The Zhizha, the Zhizha Gabor noise. Yeah, I, I hear it's not doing great. Zhizha. That's you want to hear my Zhizha impression? I don't actually, but if you if you care. Sorry, what were you saying about? 
as you were. Well, we're we're teasing that Dropbox might go away, and that that's what you're saying is basically if if since there's more users using Dropbox for free, it has more of a potential to either be bought or to go under. I mean, I'm not saying that because they. I think they've been around for a while, and they have a solid profit model where they can prove that okay, as long as we get this percent to pay, that they will fund, they will subsidize the free people. Okay. But I don't know. I'm mean, just, I'm just, I'm not saying that I know anybody or that I heard anything. <laughs> we don't know people. I mean, so, so can I just switch it all over and just use all my Gmail space? <laughs> yeah, when's that coming? There was the G Drive. I used it for a while, actually. That was a hack. It was, yeah, it was a hack completely. But they're I'm, actually going going to come out with a Dropbox competitor soon, though. right? Right. That's the rumor mill. Anyway, speaking of uh, information, the uh, we need we need taps again. <laughs> Let us, let's pray for the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica print edition. Yes, the dead tree is no longer going to be offered for um, the encyclopedia. Yeah. And the interesting point about this is that um, a lot of people were up in arms saying, like, oh, this sucks, you know, like, their business is going under. But, in fact, they're a pretty good um, business. They were saying on uh, the podcast Tech Talk or Tech News Today that... Uh, Tech Talk Tonight, that's the that's the only podcast in existence from what I heard. Um, they are talking about how um, the printed edition of Britannica makes less than 1% of Britannica sales, and they're, I think, a $200 million company. Okay. Um, so they're a company that has con- successfully transitioned from print to digital, and instead of people being all up in arms about this, they should be actually impressed by Britannica's... Uh, tech savvy they're moving into new media and surviving in this you know are the evolution of the way technology has brought the market and such um now to be honest i've never used encyclopedia encyclopedia britannica online have you uh i have not because they pay they charge for it okay so you do have to pay for it so i think you have to charge for parts of it and Further, or you, maybe you can get parts for free, but parts for pay. Maybe the chat room can tell us. But uh, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, so they they like provide like stuff that's above and beyond Wikipedia for for pay, right? Like okay, maybe like an interesting interview with this the creator of the light bulb. <laughs> yes, they went and dug up Thomas Edison and had an interview with his corpse. And I mean, because they're they're basically facing the page. fact that Wikipedia is out there, but they're charging for like also academic services that like universities pay for and stuff. So um, this could actually be something that I could get through my university's uh, library, probably. Probably because they I have, think that's how they make most of their money. I think if I remember, sense. like sixty percent of their money comes from like universities and academic institutions subscribing. Or whatever services they offer, I don't really know. But the, it it would be nice to know exactly how deep they go with all their content, like to make it better than Wikipedia. Like, if I search a word, am I definitely going to get a picture representing it, uh, a movie, some type of more interaction thing? Yeah, I mean uh, that was the thing that Wikipedia always cites that there's actually less mistakes. If you take like the eighty percent of Wikipedia articles that are actually well written, right, there are less mistakes in those than a typical encyclopedia article because encyclopedia articles are written by like one or two humans, right, and they would often get facts wrong. And yet again, I think we're a little long-winded on this story as well, so let's keep it moving along. What, um, well, okay, so the next one was my story, um, local story actually. Um, there is right now a Kickstarter, which uh, Kickstarter is a website for up and coming um, businesses, projects people want to do. They more or less ask for a certain amount of money. You can contribute, and normally they have some sort of kickback when you contribute to it. Well, right now there is a Kickstarter for what's called the 8 bit bar, which is going to be built on Cherokee Street here in, or close to here in St. Louis, which is Cher- right down the road. Yeah, Cherokee, right Ch- Cherokee Street is trying to be kind of this up-and-coming 
Um, I, I almost want to dare say that it's a little bit of a hipster part of town because they kind of like the antiques and stuff. That's actually where our they dining like room furniture came from. Stuff. Well, that's where our uh, our dining room set came from. They have a few antique furniture shops so up there. So if you're looking for furniture out there in St. Louis, check them out. I, I would say so. You um, can be a sponsor. So 8-Bit Bar is more or less their... I wouldn't call it the opposite of a sports bar, but more or less they are theming a bar like a sports bar, except instead of sports, it's games and more or less the geeky culture type stuff. Like they specifically said they're going to play D&D there. So there's going to be no talking at this bar. Just awkward silence. No, there, there's going to be talking. Like, I roll 18, so I move this amount of spaces and search the room for traps. That's the type of talking that's <laughs> going to go on. That's horrible. It's not that horrible. That's actually, you know, a compliment for d and it's, it's, they're, they're having a place to socially gather to do geeky things instead of sitting around and watching sports. Like, you know, like the TV's actually off because that's the way that I view the TV when sports are on normally. Would That's you, a good point. Would you go to a certain bar like this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So once the Kickstarter gets completely done, are we going to go check out the 8-Bit Bar and promote the Tech Talk Tonight podcast? And sure, be like, why not? We can do a live live spot. That would require me to get all this to be mobile Welcome. down here. <laughs> hey, 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 how's it going out there? We're going to kick it to Brayden, who's handing out hot dogs and balloons out at the 8-Bit Bar. How's it going, Brayden? You, you want me to do a satellite radio spot or something? Oh, yes. I didn't even turn on the radio tonight. You need to drive our van up, our radio van up to it. We, we don't have a radio van. Podcasting van, I mean. We, we, this is our radio van. It's a stick. <laughs> it's a stick. <laughs> With some electronics That's taped to it That's and a 9-volt battery. This is our van right here. I don't know what to say. Okay. So Pretty sorry sweet, if you showed up in your car and are sitting outside tonight. I didn't turn on the radio stream. Um, sue me. <laughs> um, but more power to them. Go check out their um, uh, Kickstarter account. Uh, that's the 8-Bit Bar in St. Louis. Um, this kind of sounds like a sponsor read already. So 8-Bit Bar, check us out. So our last story of the night is one of our fan favorites. Pinterest! Is it a fan favorite? It, it's for the majority of our chat room, which means Katie. Um, well, yes. let's let's have a poll. Who out there uses Pinterest? Um, I have an account. I do not post, although I haven't done too much social media lately. So Katie, says I'm gonna blame it on that. Katie loves Pinterest. Doug says no. Dryden says no. So Doug says no again. Yes. So it's more or less a girl thing, wouldn't Whoa, you say? How, why is it a girl thing? I like Pinterest. Okay. You're kind of girly. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are, are you on the um, Manterist? Manterist. What I, is it? Man Gentleman. Yeah. I'm not on that either. I, th- that is such a... Gentleman is like... A clearly ripoff. I feel like no one's actually on it, but they actually get like column space in like the New York Times because they're like the competitor to Pinterest. <laughs> well, tell me, let me tell you this. Um, one of your favorite online web apps, um, Empire Avenue. Yeah. The the worthless. game more or less that I play that goes off of the number of all your social media and stuff. It just adopted a new layout that is very much like Pinterest. Like that's how they they post up all of like more or less your feeds from Facebook and stuff in a Pinterest-like style, and you're supposed to comment and stuff on it, like from that type of layout. Uh, well, anyway, let's get to the story real quick. The okay. story is just that they were announcing um, new uh, new features, including updated profile pages, okay. um, an iPad app, and... Now, is that going to be an iPad app for the um, and Retina Pinterest screen? Yeah, probably so. Super and Pinterest will be getting, quote, more beautiful. More beautiful. I don't so know how that's possible. So they're going to add, like, flourishes in the background somehow and make it... I don't know. What, what does that mean? Does that mean they're getting more girly? I think they should just embrace their womanly uh, base. That's probably what they're doing by saying that. Probably. 
That's what I'm going to go out on a limb and say. I actually, okay, so a shout out and pandering to our audience. Uh, Scott over there on the Max Morning Show, I believe their question on Monday was, or their question of the day was, what is the most up and coming website um, going on right now? And I did not hear the answer because I kind of heard this third party through Paul. Well, it's obviously Pinterest. You're 100% positive on that. Yes. Um, okay. Because. That was my guess as well, so. The site was launched in 2009, uh, reading from the Washington Post. Was it posted, or was it was launched? Ga- it gathered 10,000 users in its first nine months. The site is now estimated to have 11 million viewer users, and according to someone that I can't find the reference to, but some, like, one of the reporting agencies says that this was the fastest growing website ever. Gotcha. In the past, like, nine months. Was it... Oh, that's fine. Was it launched at South by Southwest? No. No. Nothing is. Just there is. Twitter. Or, was Twitter? Dang it. Foursquare. Foursquare was launched at South by Southwest. Go all of us. Now, to loop this back into our earlier discussion, um, Kate and I were actually trying to figure out if there's a way to pull your data out of Pinterest, because there also has been discussions this week about copyright infringement with Pinterest. Um, and whether they're going to be in trouble there. And there's actually, because Pinterest has grown so fast, they don't have a lot of the features that you'd expect. Um, They've focused on product, and they don't have a good API yet. Actually, they had an API, and they shut it down. Okay. Presumably, they're going to open it back up again. But there's no way to get your data out of Pinterest right now. And it's like, what if Pinterest goes away? Like, people who have invested, like, if you use this it's one for of those free apps. Yeah, it's free app. If you if you actually use it, you could be screwed someday. Agreed. So everybody stop using Pinterest this very second and go back to G plus. So my prediction comes true from several episodes ago and not Gavin's like the way that it seems to be going right now. I think that's the end story we should go with on this. Don't you? Sounds like a wrap. That y- you're agreeing with me that we should prove you wrong? I don't know what you said. I was looking at Pinterest. How dare you? Ooh, mini farmer cheese pies, Katie Lord. posted. Hmm. It's because it's pie, folks. He has a pie addiction. This is more or less his Christmas. I'm, I'm going to compare this day to Christmas for him. Cause yeah, he, did we mention that it's pie day? We didn't. How dare... Well, you were complaining that there was no pie at the very beginning of the show, before anybody even started watching, but... I had my pie today, but I was hoping for two. How dare I? I haven't had had pie pie. in a really long time. When's the last time you had pie? Americans don't eat pie enough. But it's all American like homemade apple pie. I know, but I don't think people eat it enough. I did not have any pie today, but I don't eat any pie. That's what I'm going on a limb and saying. I've heard she kisses. Worthless. Caramel in them. Worthless. That's not American. Hershey's American. Hershey, Pennsylvania. Born bright and true. You really think that chocolate is made in the United States? I've been to the Hershey factory. I saw them make it. That's not their only factory. I believe that. But this one they that really I just make ate. It in China, Brayden. No, I don't know. I don't I'm sure so. they make it in Hershey. I don't know. Anyway. We're digressing. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Yes. Where can they find you, Gavin? GavinR.com. Check out my sweet uh, HDR pics. They are very sweet. Um, Gavin came in with me with my little... Uh, La Meyer uh, Sculpture Park project out there the other night and took some rad pictures that I'm going to steal from him and use for my own personal gain. Dude, that's really easy to do. On the iPhone, you just turn on HDR and then you throw it through an HDR app. And then the eyeball one, I also put into Photoshop and messed with the saturation. But, I mean, it's not like it's not like I'm a good photographer or anything. What's the HDR app you were using? Or is it just called that? Uh, I used a an free and open source one called Luminance HDR. Just Google it. I will Google it. Forge. Now, the the HDR that I've done was through, in, uh, no, Camera Plus. Camera Plus has a filter called HDR that kind of makes the same effect. Maybe. Anyway. But then you can't export it to Photoshop, which is actually where it looked really, you have to mess with it after HDR to make it look really good. That's all I got. I could export it from Twitter Camera Plus. Governor. Okay. That's enough out of you. Anyway, I'm Braden Henze. Uh, thank you all for being in the chat room tonight, even though my monitor turned off and I can't see you right now. But thank you for being here, uh, Gavin, Dryden, Katie. Anybody else out there? 
I don't think so. Okay. You guys are all our loyal fan Doug. base. We thank you all. Um, you said Gavin and Dryden. Hey, Hersey kisses for you. Who did I say? You said Gavin instead of Doug. Doug. Duggle. It's all you, buddy. And, you know, Doug's out there doing manly things and doesn't have enough manly friends, he tells me. So if you want to be Doug's manly friend, contact <laughs> Doug at, is it Doug L on Twitter? Yeah, something he like doesn't that. want anybody to know that. Anyway, find me on Google Plus. Uh, that's Braden Henze. I'm um, Braden H on Twitter, and always you can go check out HenzeDigitalMedia.com, where I will, you know, eventually update some more stuff. And with that, we shall end our episode number fifty-three. Thank subscribe on iTunes. Yes, subscribe on iTunes. I have no idea how many subscriptions I haven't checked that lately. I think but we have two. We're we have to have I more just than made two. That up. I, I've subscribed more than twice. Anyway. Um, Yes, we're out there on iTunes. We're still waiting for that video feed to come down. I don't know what else to do. But uh, audio for us uh, out on iTunes, which you can find that right on our site, which is techtalktonight.com. Thank you all, and we'll see you next Wednesday.